people here in Alaska. We like to visit about once a year, go for a nice uh, nature hike. We're on a mission trip to Alaska, uh, visiting some friends, doing some ministry in Anchorage and in Fairbanks. Uh, usually preach out on the streets and on the universities. We're gonna go to the University of uh, Alaska in Anchorage, the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, and uh, do some street preaching. I wanted to do a little Bible study with you guys out here in the wild of Alaska on this uh, question, you know, does God respect man's free will in salvation? Uh, does God respect man's free moral agency uh, when God converts a man? And it's kind of a silly question, actually, because, of course, God deals with man as a man because that's what man is. Man is a free moral agent. So when God seeks to convert a man, God is seeking to convert a free moral agent. Uh, God doesn't deal with man as a dog. God doesn't deal with man as a robot. God doesn't deal with man as a planet. God deals with man as a man. And God created man as a free moral agent. That means we make our own choices. We have the power of self-determination. Uh, God doesn't cause us um, to repent. He calls us to repent. God doesn't cause us to believe. He commands that we believe. And so God deals with man as a free moral agent with the power of self-determination. So this question, does God usurp man's free will in salvation or does God override man's free will in salvation? Um, it doesn't make much sense. God deals with man as a man. And uh, I want to maybe walk around a little bit over here. Uh. So, you know, when God created the world, He created laws. Uh, there's, there's laws of gravity, laws of um, aerodynamics, and there's certainly uh, laws of man's human nature. Um, you know, free will is a faculty of our nature. So, when an airplane takes off, it's not defying the laws of aerodynamics. It is not overriding the laws of aerodynamics it's actually operating according to the laws of aerodynamics. And when God converts a man, he's not overriding the laws of man's nature. He's not usurping the laws of man's nature. Uh, he's actually acting in accordance with the laws of man's nature. Because if you think about what are, what's the means that God uses to bring us to repentance? What, what's the means that God uses? And the means that he uses is the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So truth is an influence upon the will through the medium of the mind. When the truth about sin enters into the mind, it influences the will towards uh, obeying God. When the influence of the atonement enters into, uh, uh, the truth of the atonement enters into the mind, it influences the will towards loving God and obeying God. And so the means that God uses to convert a soul are um, suited towards the nature of man as a free moral agent. The Bible says, uh, No man can come unto me unless the Father which sent me has drawn him, and I will raise him up on the last day. John 6, 44. But verse 45 says, They shall all be taught of God. Therefore everyone who has heard and has learned of the Father comes on to me. So the medium or the means that God uses to draw men onto himself is the uh, the teaching of revelation, the influence of truth. Uh, the Bible says, um, come, let us reason together. And though your sins be red as scarlet, uh, they shall become as white as snow. And so again we see God dealing with man as a free moral agent whose will is influenced by the truth. And just like the devil tries to influence man's decisions through deceptions, through lies, God influences man's decisions through truth. 
Which is why we need to evangelize and preach the truth. Because when we proclaim the gospel in public, that's influencing the will of society by presenting these truths to their mind. It's the persuasion of the Spirit, the persuasion of the Holy Ghost to quicken their conscience, to uh, reveal to them that, uh, that they are wrong and guilty and rebels against God and in need of uh, salvation, uh, who ought to repent. Uh, these are influences upon the will. So when God seeks to convert a man, he doesn't usurp his will, he doesn't override his will, he influences his will. He turns his will through the influence of the truth and the Holy Spirit. Maybe I'll uh, take you for a walk down here too. So think about, like, what is the nature of uh, regeneration? Uh, regeneration is not when a man becomes a free moral agent. Uh, regeneration is when God changes or uh, turns a free moral agent. Regeneration is not when man receives the ability of making a choice. Uh, regeneration is when God, through the influence of the truth presented by the Holy Spirit, uh, chooses the truth and chooses righteousness. So the faculties of our soul remain the same. The faculties of our nature. The mind that we used to use for sin, when we get regenerated, we use that mind for righteousness. So it's not the nature of a man or the constitution of a man that changes in regeneration. It's uh, how he chooses to use it. Uh, a carnal man who is carnally minded uses the faculties of his body for self-gratification and for sin. Uh, a Christian uses the faculties of his being for the glory of God and the well-being of his neighbor. So given the nature of regeneration, that regeneration is a turning from sin to righteousness, uh, it must be a voluntary change. And as a voluntary change, it must be brought about with means that are consistent with our free moral agency. So, you know, God is not a tyrant. He doesn't force people to do His will. Uh, he, he doesn't force you to love Him. He doesn't force you to know Him. And that's why there's a lot of people who don't know God. It's not that God doesn't want to know them, it's that they don't want to know Him. He says, I wanted to gather you unto myself, as a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. See, the only barrier in the way of a man's salvation is his own stubborn will. Uh, it's not a lack of love in the heart of God. It's not that God planned for him to sin and go to hell, or God predestined him to sin and go to hell. The only barrier in the way of a man's salvation is his own stubborn will, which refuses to submit to the truth. So the, the law was presented to be an influence upon man's stubborn will. The gospel was presented to be an influence upon man's stubborn will. The atonement is meant to draw us onto Christ. Uh, the sacrifice of Christ says, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. So again, you see man trying to uh, subdue man's will. So when God seeks to convert a man, He seeks to woo him. Uh, through the Gospel, uh, we were supposed to, and many of us do, fall in love with God. And because we love Him, because He first loved us, you know, we obey Him. So this question, does God respect man's free moral agency when He converts a man? It's like, well, how else would he, how else would he convert a man from sin to righteousness? Sin is the wrong use of your free moral agency. Righteousness is the proper use of your free moral agency. So if conversion is going from sin to righteousness, from serving the devil to serving God, it has to be consistent, or the means of conversion have to be consistent with the nature of man, which is a free moral agent. 
So it's kind of a silly, a silly question. Anyways, uh, if you study the Bible, you'll see there's many times God wanted to convert people, but they were not converted, uh, which shows their free moral agency. Uh, there's times, you know, God was frustrated with men because they refused to repent. Jesus rebuked entire cities because they didn't repent. Jesus marveled at their unbelief. All of that shows the volitional nature of repentance and the volitional nature of faith. God doesn't just zap people with faith or zap people with repentance. It's a, it's a free uh, moral uh, decision on the part of man brought about by the influence of God. Anyways, I just wanted to take advantage of this nice scenic background to do a little Bible study for you guys. I hope uh, you'll study the Bible about it, think about it, because as Christians, our job is to uh, to convert the, the heathen. The Bible says, uh, you know, he that converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. I mean, the Great Commission is that we, as the body of Christ, as the church, take the gospel to the ends of the earth to convert the world. So if we're going to be playing a role in the conversion of sinners, we need to know the means that God uses to convert sinners. And the primary instrument or tool is the truth, presented to the mind, illuminated by the Holy Spirit, to influence the free decisions of a man's will. Amen. So you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God bless you guys.